which is uh, how this uh, robotic uh, attitude of um, of discourse, but also of uh, in, de in the dissemination process of uh, the robotization of the border is active, is one thing. The other thing that you're uh, dealing with is um, also the randomization of movement. What is randomization and how um, the robot is reacting also to uh, the possible movement of the people uh, actually passing the borders. And then also the question which is um, relates also to uh, analytics of movement and uh, uh, how Laban uh, just uh, how you use uh, in fact uh, movement analysis to uh, build the performance and at one point to blur the border between fiction and reality. Yeah, I, I, I think that um, in order to imagine um, what is happening in that situation we really had to enter a logic of a robot, which is an if-then uh, strategy. So we had to somehow uh, sit and imagine what, what, is the, what could be a possible movement of, of a person and what could be a possible response of a robot, and somehow to mechanize all this process. Um, so, so we had to go through movement analysis or possibilities of movement, action and reaction, uh, in order to construct the text that, that you just heard. There's maybe another uh, aspect of the performance that we could discuss a little bit is uh, also what Olivier Marchard is calling pre-performance. Pre-enactment. Pre-enactment and how by performing we can see a vision of the future. Yeah, so, so um, Olivier Marchard is a political scientist uh, from Vienna and I mean we use a lot in theater this, this idea of reenactment. I think it's also, in, specifically in the choreographic medium, it's used a lot by restaging existing pieces uh, from, from previous years. And, and Olivier, Olivier Marchand proposed a, a new kind of term, which is pre-enactment, which actually uh, uh, to, uh, almost to pre-enact a, a probable future. And, 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 and somehow, um, for me, he calls the artist also to, to become an oracle to see what would be a, a most probable future. And I think this, this strategy is what we tried to, to convey. We, we really tried to imagine what this, what this future will look like. So we have a little time left. Would you like to discuss about uh, the next chapter or would you like to stand with this chapter? We have uh, eight minutes. Mm. Maybe there are questions uh, from the audience. you are uh, 
are testifying about, uh, the images you are testifying, for instance, uh, in Taos, it's very um, clear, and so I wanted to know more about that. Um, so, uh, whether in archive, uh, to your first question, whether in archive it was crucial um, of me um, being the author, being the Israeli, the Israeli choreographer that reiterates the movement of other Israelis. In archive, it felt um, a bit less um, urgent because I will I will explain why. Um, the uh, art, um, Talos, the original Talos, was conceived by um, a group. It was uh, it was a group coming from different countries. Um, um, so the, um, it, it's not it, it's less important who who is the who is part of the group. I mean, if if we have a, a, a person like me speaking in English or a person like Lara speaking in French, uh, the idea of multiplicity of languages was important to, to Talos because it is. Uh, a European project somehow, which which you which used also, I imagine, a lot of languages inside the the theme. So it was it was some the fact that Lara is a dancer and I'm a dancer it doesn't change the way we perform. We're not dancing; we're delivering a text. It, it was more related to language. <laughs> and I I also did this show in Israel and I translated the text to Hebrew, and I it was struck to me how closer the te the text felt. Uh, than English, because we are very much uh, used to English to be uh, the text of this kind of projects, and English has a very specific quality. It, it has a specific distance between because it's a lot for a lot of us. It's not our mother tongue, and it felt. I mean, uh, doing the, the the French version was also to kind of to bring it closer to the French audience, and and to let the the, the text. To, uh, and, and the words and the meaning of the words to, be, to make to, to come closer. It was an attempt of playing with this aspect. This is the first um, your first remark. Um, and, um, and and the, the place of emotions um, and um, the neutrality of approach to this material. I, I think it, it comes back to this uh, what I mentioned about being not moralistic because. I think it's not my aim. It's not my my goal to comment on the material. I want to posit to, to check your position to it through my neutrality. So therefore, I, I need because if I raise the flag and say, Ah, look, it's bad. Um, you feel good. Everything is fine. Somebody said it's bad. Maybe you agree. Uh, somehow the the, com the comfortable position of the audience is remained. And I think being neutral and, and pose a question in between us, rather than arguing for for where do I stand in its moralistic uh, in its morality, uh, is, a, is about to agitate this point, to, to agitate our all, uh, all our inclusiveness in this uh, process, in this uh, topic, uh, and, and 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 question your position, to, uh, or, or to kind of to, to trigger you to position yourself. In relation to what you see, to the material that you are unfolded with. There was a question. Thank you. Um, it's all very, very interesting. And I, well, my question is really somehow related to what was already asked, but a little bit different. I was. <clears throat> I would like to go back to archive and the use of repetition as a device that you've commented on, and uh, which I believe you said is used to create a new gaze. Get a different attention, and then to me, repetition <clears throat> sounds like a, somehow an annihilating effect. I'm thinking of Brechtian categories, and uh, um, it's certainly a tool to make people aware. Now, I'm asking whether we also use other devices, maybe uh, that would uh, somehow let the viewer approach the material in a more empathetic way, because the first time we see the images, we are very, um, somehow we, we feel emotions about them, and it seems to me that the process of getting into these different guys is through an annihilating effect. 
uh, am I understanding it the wrong way, or are you actually using some other tools that counter this more rational approach to it? I, I think um, uh, there is repetition, but, but for me, through repetition, there is also accumulation. And this is two, di uh, two different processes because, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it, they are connected to each other. Uh, because indeed, if you see a footage from the first time, you have a specific engagement with it, whether you understand it, not understanding, um, trying to figure it out. But there is something in accumulating the material, then I think that there, there is an emotional effect. I don't know if I would call it empathy, maybe, but maybe other, uh, other kinds of engagement can, be, uh, can appear. Uh, but in, indeed, in archive, there are several ways. I mean, there is, a, there is also a moment where I, I accumulate sound. So there is a loop around the stage and, and, I, and I start to recite all the sounds that I heard during the performance. And, and again, there is a process of accumulating sound. So you, you, you would remember that sound from a, a previous, from one a half an hour before, but suddenly this sound is coming back and starting to accumulate. So, so then I think there is a, 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 a triggering of, of of the other emotional aspects, and you, you cannot somehow remain indifferent, or or, or this uh, this neutrality is broken somehow through accumulation. Uh, yeah, he hello. I would like to comment on the first image of archive. Uh, he, uh, it was just done, but um, my my sensation was that it was getting very much emotional. The reenactment out of the context made us see. The actual gestures, which was actually quite hard to distinguish in the image. Uh, and my first question is, how did you get the idea of this work of repetition? How did it come to you? And the other one is, how uh, did you actually work? And how was it received? Where did you take the performance? And I, I guess you, you, you performed it in front of the occupied territories or in Israel. And I would like to know what the reactions were. Um, so I, the idea of, of doing it. Um, so first, I, I sat I sat in the archives of the Tzelen, meaning I watched hours of footage. So actually, this 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 kind of engagement of me watching is uh, is, is what happening in the show. So it's really an extraction of of my action of my action of watching. So the show is not only. I mean, in the video installation that you saw, it, it is already engaged, but in the, in the performance we have a process. First I watch, then I slowly start to engage, and it, it accumulates somehow. So, so this, this, is, this is really extracted from um, the, the reality, the, my, my, my encounter with the material. Uh, moreover, there is a matter of, like I mentioned, a lot of the um, a lot of the events that you saw that you see in the in the actual archive is a repetition already. They are repeated over and over again, a lot of times in the same location. So they, they become already a, 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 a sort of strategy that, that I, I took again to the to the choreographic work. Um, but then, of course, there was there was um, I mean this this this. this uh, the deviation of a gaze um, towards only the Israeli um, uh, who, who are captured on screen made a whole new layer to this kind of engagement. It, 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 me being an Israeli, uh, embodying the gestures of Israeli, so, so my position and my involvement work was clarified through, through this process of, of, of repetition and, and engagement. And, and there was another... Oh, the reception. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, how you worked also, how, how did you actually work? Um, Watching the images again and again? I mean, it was, was, it it? was projected in the, stu in the studio, and what you can see in the... in the... <coughs> in the... Um, um, what, what you can see in a certain point in the video installation, that the camera is, uh, is opening up and you see a projector screen in the studio and me basically gazing on, a project, on an image screen on, 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 the, on the wall. So this is actually, this was the practice. It's, it's really looking and while looking, uh, repeating the gesture. And this is also 
translated to the stage where it is happening really on the stage. Yeah, and Vincent was also sending you materials every week, so there was also this process of giving, uh, always being into the movement also. Yeah, th there was a question of, for, first of all, what do I choose? I mean, as I mentioned, there is 6,000 hours, more than 6,000 hours of footage. <coughs> what do I depict? Uh, and of course, my, me being a choreographer, the, the movement they became a, an interest, in which kind of movements are, are striking. A lot of the movements, I mean, we, we, we could see them, sometimes in, in, in a different context and, and they would look as, as contemporary dance. Mm -hmm. uh, but here, by placing the political, uh, the, the actual actions from, from outside of the theater next to the movement, they, 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 they gain a, a very different uh, agency somehow. Um, and about the reception, I mean, I, I showed the work in Israel um, 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 and uh, it, there's a whole, I mean, there's a whole story with the, with the reception of this work. Uh, there was a mobilization of a lot of right-wing activists and politicians against me. Um, a part of my funding was cut. Uh, um, there, there was demonstrations held against me. Um, so uh, there was, and of course, all this aftermath was happening by people that actually did not see the work. <laughs> they, uh, they just. Um, I mean, the, they associated me with Bezalem, which is actually like since that period of time, 2014 until now, we have a, a, in Israel a constant attempt to stop the actions or to prevent the actions of human rights organizations, mm -hmm. to, to stop and prevent actions of uh, artists who are critically outspoken. Mm -hmm. And only last week there was a, a, a kind of a law, a new law issued in Israel that allows the Ministry of Culture to withdraw funding from whoever is not in line with uh, with what she what she thinks, uh, so it's 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 actually a whole process where the, the piece was somehow part of uh, until its actual uh, legislation of this this uh, this law uh, this week, which I think kind of really ends an era where it was ambiguous. Can the system interfere? That it, it was interfering, but but legally there was kind of somehow restrictions. But now the restrictions are gone and. Um, Josette, do we have five minutes left or not? Yes. Just maybe as uh, a closure, if there's uh, one question there, and then maybe uh, just some uh, prospect on Necropolis, if you want to know a little bit also on Necropolis. Yes, hello, I'm sorry, I have just a quick question that I didn't get it very well. This machine talents can harm people? It depends what you mean by harm, um, and this is exactly the question. I mean, um, um, so in the in the actual project, the um, uh, if you go, I mean, now the the web, the, the, what was interesting that they dropped the, the website of the project when my piece uh, came out which was in, really in a matter of days, and I don't know if there is a connection, but maybe there is. But if you go on the website, if you, when it was still there, and you scroll down to the very, very end, to the very last um, um, paragraph somehow, they, they, they did state that they planned, or there is a possibility of installing a weapon on this device. Uh, um, 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 Non-lethal weapon. And non-lethal weapon is a, is a very wide uh, uh, a range of, uh, of interpretation what it can be. Um, and indeed, the, there was a debate uh, uh, in, the, in the consortium that was building the project whether it, it is possible to install the weapon on it. And, and then 70% of the responders said that uh, it should not be installed and 30% of the responders said it should. Um, and what they decided in the end that it's really depending on the consumer side. So if if your uh, so it's it's a really kind of uh, economic strategy. We can adapt the device to your needs. If if your country allows uh, non non little weapons to be to be used, we, we can install it for you. And if not, we can uh, take them off. Um, could you tell me a little bit about the 
spectatorship of Talos. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, the reaction of the, mm. the audience. Um, it's very hard for me to like if we if we take the example of yesterday of the tree uh, that uh, the guy from Romani Protocol brought. I mean, I don't know what which tree you see, uh, <laughs> what kind of tree you imagine, uh, but um, um, I think the. Um, there is a, a moment in the performance when it, when it, I, I think there is a, a point that it, it becomes really um, absurd, uh, and um, and uh, I think it's a, it's a point, it's an emotional point. Speaking of emotions, and and reuttering this kind of strategy that is happening there. Uh, I mean, I, I, I can uh, 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 give an example. Somebody said that he became really nauseous. Uh, um, and, and for me it's interesting in, in relation to a non-verbal perception. Even if Talos uses a lot of verbality, there is something that it tries to convey which is not, not, uh, it's not coming from the brain, but, but really comes of experience. And I think this is what I'm trying to, to do. Um. Sorry. Um, we have to stop if we want a very short break. Um, thank you very much for a very interesting. I must say, I'm.